What's up guys, Nature from Protoculture and Shadow Chronicles back again here at Sonic Academy. It's the end of the year, so of course we've got a brand new Cubase update from Steinberg. 2019, we're looking at version 10.5 currently. Let's dive into the DAW, we'll check out some of the new features on offer in the latest update. I'll catch you in a sec. Right, here we go in Cubase 10.5. Uh, the first thing that you're going to notice is there's a couple of changes to the GUI. Uh, a number of the menus have been redone to kind of bring it up to uh, the design aesthetic that they brought in with version 10. Um, there's also stuff like the mixer channels now that are, uh, you can color code them. Uh, you can set that up with the preferences menu. There's a bunch of new options for the user interface there as well, which has been updated. Um, you can see the menus, for example, like this has all been kind of brought up to speed. Uh, and there's a couple of workflow impr improvements in a lot of the menus as well. For example, that you now have access to all kinds of tracks from the add track uh, menu as well as you can enter names beforehand, uh, which is a nice addition. I'm not going to focus too much on these little changes. Uh, that is often the focus of the 0.5 releases with Cubase. Um, that said, they have actually added two new plugins, um, which we're going to quickly take a look at as well, and then some of the more standout features for me. Uh, the first one we're going to check out is Pad Shop version 2. <coughs> uh, here we go. It looks kind of familiar, um, but they've added a bunch of new things. I'm not going to go into too much depth uh, with this one, uh, but they've got multiple layers now that you can activate and crossfade between. Uh, this is our granular oscillator, uh, which obviously generates little particles uh, from the playhead. Uh, this one you should be familiar with if you've used this before. But they have added in a new oscillator mode, uh, which you can switch to, which is a loop oscillator. And instead of generating particles, this instead uh, time stretches your audio. Uh, so there's a number of cool things you can do with that. I'm just going to bring in a piece of audio. And you have drag and drop functionality now as well. Oh, this is fine. Use that one instead. Um, so you'll see that is now mapped to our keyboard. You can slow that down. You can play in reverse as well. And obviously speed it up. And then your loop points. You have a few different uh, loop modes that you can use as well. And then very much like the granular side of things as well, you can up the number of voices or player heads and then uh, randomize the start positions or the panning and stuff per voice as well. So you get quite nice thick sounds. And then this spectral section in the middle here I quite like as well. It's also a new addition. Um, this purity dial uh, I find quite useful. This will basically remove uh, upper harmonics from the spectrum. So you'll end up with sort of sign-like sounds. And in reverse you'll get sort of upper harmonics being added in. Gives you a more gritty sort of washed out sound as well. So that's uh, some of the new features in Pad Shop. There are a number of other additions in here, but we're not going to go into that in too much detail today. Uh, we're going to take a look at the next plugin, which is on offer as well. And that is the multi-tap delay. So uh, right off the bat, it kind of looks pretty much like a standard um, multi-tap delay unit, but there's a bunch of stuff under the hood. Uh, it's quite a powerful little plugin, this. Uh, we will just check out a preset quickly. I've just got a saw wave from Retrolog loaded up. So this is one of the presets. So you can hear there's a lot of complex modulation and delays going on in this. Um, you have a number of different modes that you can use the Digital Modern right through to the Crazy, which does some pretty wacky pitch effects. Um, then you have the tap engine, we're not going to get into that too much, that's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, there's a global sample rate divider as well, which is nice, uh, it reduces the sample rate for the entire signal chain. Then you also have the effect sections, so each tap, uh, and, and then also your post effects, um, you have this sort of insert effect section where you can load modules in, up to six in series. 
And the nice thing about this with the tap effect is that the taps can actually um, have individual settings per uh, FX module as well. So if we go to the phaser, for example, let's just remove that one. Um, we can select the width and actually set individual width settings per tap as well. So you can see you can get some pretty incredibly complex um, uh, delay lines going on and a super nice creative effect that I'm actually really looking forward to experimenting a lot more with. Uh, I think there's a lot that you can do with this, especially from a sound design point of view. So that is multi-tap delay for Cubase 10.5. Now I'm going to jump into a few of the other features that I really like. Uh, we're going to look at one called retrospective recording. If I'm uh, playing around with a synth, for example, and I do something that I like, we have this little icon down at the bottom uh, that will insert the retrospective recording buffer into my tr channel. Uh, if I click that, you'll see all those notes that I played. have been saved in the background uh, whilst I was working. And this will apply to MIDI CC controls as well. So if you are playing around with the synth patch and you do some little um, tweaks to it that you like, even if you're not recording, they will be available to you there at the touch of a button. Uh, you can check out on the left-hand side here as well. There's a few other options as well. If you are in cycle mode, for example, uh, you can also first empty out the retrospective recording buffer as well and these apply the buffers apply to separate tracks as well so if you do stuff on this channel and then on this one you'll have separate buffers for each of them as well should you want to insert those on their respective channels um, we'll see with the playhead um, with the track running in cycle mode if we go back now and insert it from this side as a cycle recording uh, you now have the option to open up your lens and use your comping tools to comp these together. Uh, you have different loops, so you can kind of sort of put together the perfect take, uh, much the same as you would with a vocal take as well. So that is retrospective recording. Really nice to have and really nice that they kind of brought that to the forefront now as well. Then uh, the next feature I'm going to take a look at, which is arguably one of my favorites in 10.5, <clears throat> they have overhauled the import audio uh, import track from uh, project feature. So this was around since version 10, um, but they have tweaked it a little bit now. So for example, we have some MIDI that we have here. But we don't like what's going on with the sound. And I, for instance, have something that I know works and I want to try to recycle that in a track. We can go to import. We'll go tracks from project. We'll grab a project file I'm working on. It'll scan the project and once that comes in, uh, you have the option now to select tracks from this. So usually you would just select one and would bring in the whole track, MIDI, automation, everything uh, on a new track for you to use in your project. What you can do now, which is super handy, is to just select something like the space channel, for example, and we will just select Retrolog as the target track. Uh, I've then disabled the events and parts, I've disabled the automation, and that's all we need to look at now. You have some options as to where it imports that track into as well, and whether it's going to copy audio files to your project folder. But for this uh, example, we're just going to bring in the channel and inspector settings. And I can just hit OK. And there you have it. Now, uh, channel has now been imported successfully. So you can see if you've uh, kept your projects uh, nicely organized, this is a massive resource of, of stuff that you can use, especially if it's stuff that's tried and tested that can then be remixed into projects. And it's just a huge time saver to be able to bring stuff like that in uh, without having to redo everything again or, or manually save out specific presets for specific insert effects and stuff like that. So really, really cool feature and a, a huge boost to your workflow when working in 10.5. Now, the next one as well, which is another, another big update, is the EQs. And they kind of approached this the same way that they did with the side chaining that came out in version 10 as well. It's just so nicely integrated into Cubase now. Uh, we have seen this kind of feature with stuff like Pro Q uh, 3, but this you don't need to go into another preset to set it up. It's right in front of you. Um, so, with regards to our EQ, 
we can enable the active channel comparison and you'll see that highlights. Um, we can then select a channel to compare it to. We'll take these hats for example. Um, and you have a couple of options here for setting up what your transparency is for the FFT and, and so forth. But when we play that back now, you'll see we have a, a readout for the hats in the yellow one, it's the custom colors that I've set up. Uh, but regardless, you have the kick EQ that you can now EQ. whilst comparing it to another channel. The other nice thing with this now as well is that without having to close this down and open up another uh, channel settings inspector, uh, you can just flip between the two. So you can adjust your e EQ for the hats pretty much at the same time that you're doing the kicks. You can also solo the hats from here, solo the kick. And this also applies to uh, parameters like volume. So you can jump into the hats, bring the volume down. You'll see you can adjust inserts from here as well, and then jump back into your kick again and adjust the inserts there. So this is really, really nicely integrated. Uh, I can see myself using this a lot in the future, especially for you know making clashing things sit together. Uh, very, very cleverly thought out uh, way of implementing this in 10.5. Now, uh, down to audio editing, they've introduced a new tool for us as well, the combined selection tool. <clears throat> so two of the tools used quite often, namely the range select and the object select, uh, they've combined that into two. Uh, you can see my range select is actually set to uh, adjust my cycle markers as well. That's a setting that you can set up in the preferences. Um, if you hit the combine selection tool here, you now have a context selection tool, a context sensitive selection tool. So if you grab the bottom half of a part, you can move it around pretty much the same way you would with the normal selection tool. And if you shift up to the top half, you'll be able to um, use the range selection. And then you have options like grabbing this and moving that out, grabbing a specific drum sample, for example. And um, yeah, super handy little tool to have. It takes a little bit of getting used to, but once you're aware of that sort of context sensitivity, then uh, it becomes really, really handy. Um, this also applies when using the number one shortcut for the object selection tool. So you can select the mode, normal sizing, right up to time stretching. And that'll apply as well with this context sensitive area yeah, that you can still apply your time stretching at the bottom like that. So that is the combine select tool, also a really nice little addition to 10.5. So I'm going to pretty much, that's the ones that I wanted to focus on. Um, there are a number of other little things that are worth a quick mention, uh, namely if you're working from uh, audio to picture, you can now export video. Uh, it's very simple, you can just export a video file and this is huge because before you used to have to actually export uh, an audio file and then take it into a video editor to basically compile the two together uh, you can do this straight from cubase now which is very handy uh, there's the new normalizing uh, you can normalize files according to lufs now as well instead of just peak and uh, the project handling has been improved a lot. This was another feature that I really liked. Uh, if you're working with multiple projects, it used to be a bit of a pain opening them up and they'd be activated automatically. And when you deactivated a project, if you had a number of them open at the same time, um, it would randomly select a project in the background and reactivate that one automatically. And that can be a bit of an irritation seeing as some projects take a couple of minutes to load sometimes. So that is all done manually now. None of that actually happens automatically. You select which ones open and when you want them open. They've also added a uh, safe mode startup for Cubase, which I really like. Uh, if you have crashes from plugins, you know, especially if you're a Mac user, they tend to break things when they move to um, a new OS every now and then. Uh, so if you're having issues with plugins, you can start up Cubase in safe mode, which will actually disable all your plugins, and then you can go and manually activate them to kind of figure out which ones are causing the problems, rather than have, having to manually dig through a folder on your machine to try and work out which ones are causing issues. 
as far as the stability of the release is concerned, I did unfortunately come across a few little bugs, which I'm sure they'll iron out fairly soon. Um, 10 was actually very, very stable for me. Uh, for the most part, this is working very well. I did have one small issue with VST3 plugins uh, causing random CPU spikes. Um, however, I did find a workaround for that. So if you are experiencing that issue, uh, what you can do is go and activate the ACO guard uh, in your studio setup there. And the other function that you wanted to go and tweak is under the preferences, under plugins, disable this suspend VST3 plugin processing. Uh, that seemed to fix the issue for me. Uh, hopefully that would help you as well if you're having those random CPU spikes. Uh, that pretty much covers the basics with 10.5. Uh, it's quite a nice update. I like uh, a lot of the new features. Like I said, I'm a big fan of these little workflow improvements. Um, I find Cubase really good when it comes to, to that kind of stuff. Anyway, so I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I will catch you soon again here yeah, on Sonic Academy. Cheers. Thanks everybody for watching, commenting and indeed liking. We really do appreciate all the support we get here on our Sonic Academy YouTube channel. So if you find this video super useful, please, we'd love you to hit the subscribe button. We update the uh, YouTube channel every week with new content. And if you want to watch some more relevant content, just click on the videos beside me.